Welcome to another video, and I'm so excited to speak on this around the CRM. This is six menu items, and there are some hidden items that are over here that we're going to discuss, but let's jump into it. If you haven't already seen the video on the calendar and the calendar appointment types, then I want to make sure that you stop and look at that, unless you're specifically here looking for CRM information. First and foremost, you have to know and understand that companies and contacts are two separate entities. But the advantage of utilizing companies mean that you can attach a primary contact and other contacts to them. Creating a company is pretty simple. You click on the add button. It can also be created through a form and you can assign their role. Of course, roles are going to be the same three roles that are for a contact, but we're going to discuss that in a second. You have a lead, a prospect, and a client. And if you don't know the differences between the three of them, a client is the, I would say, the paying person, the person that you've already established a working relationship. A prospect is someone who you're establishing a relationship with. Maybe they're in the phase of getting the estimate or the proposal. And then you have a lead who's just very much so warm, but not yet at the stage of being hot. All right. So that's the difference there. You also have the ability to add their custom logo, and then you can assign them to a primary contact. So a contact is necessary when creating a an actual company, and they do have the ability to prevent them from transitioning over from being um, a company over to their individual space. Individual mode just means that they have their own contact um, profile as well, and they have different accessibility or even visibility if they're in a circle or a group or whatnot. And then you can also add different associated contacts as well. Please keep note that the roles for a contact is also unique because you can make them a prospect, but the company is a, a full client and you can switch those up accordingly. You will need all of their basic information and then you also have the ability to send them a portal access at the same time here. And then adding the contacts that are associated, you can also do the same thing of adding where they are. The only thing is at this stage, um, you can still add them as a client. However, they don't have the ability to um, be the primary client. It's just someone who's a friend or not a friend, but associated with the company. Then you have the company details as well listed here. All of the details that you would possibly need for them would be listed here, included most of the, of the custom fields. I have none created, but you can categorize them and add different categories in the back end. You can add their website, their phone numbers, their background. And most of this can also be filled out from a form as well. You have the coordinator who is essentially the point of contact and then you have an assigned salesperson and the salesperson is unique because of the visibility restrictions so you can say okay this person is the salesperson that's claimed to them and most times you can see this in like tax situations where you are having tax preparers work on said client and so you want them to be visible to this client but overall you can switch it up and you know make it exclusive for them as well as you you can obviously add them as a coordinator versus a a salesperson but that's all up to you okay you can add them to email marketing audiences and you can add them to event uh, generators which we'll speak on later but that's basically just a scheduled reminder and then tags, even though I don't utilize tags, it is a good way for you to help to organize your company as well. You have some buttons at the bottom. Some people get really confused about these. This returns you back to the list where the, con the, the companies are. You can see the actual company card itself, and then you can keep editing and just save it overall. You can clear the changes and start over if you felt like it was just not correct. Going back, you also have the next tab, which is going to be the contacts. And it's the same spiel. You have the ability to add a contact at this stage as well. You can add a company to them. And so you have the ability to change the role. You can also add a photo. You can add all of their basic information. You can add all their background. And then you can link a company. But in this case, you have to create the company first. And then you can link them here. You have the same ability to do all of the coordinators as well. So adding that coordinator and that salesperson. And then you can add them to marketing events, 
tags and custom fields, even though I have done created. So that's the beauty of that as well. And I mean, I want to make sure you understand that these two things are separate entities. So this is an individual. This is an individual. They're both made to be separate so that they can have their own identity and their profile as well. Circles are very big. If you don't know about circles already, circles pretty much run this whole process. You can group people in circles when it's specific to maybe you want to see them at a level of, you know, clients or prospects or leads. You can have those separate circles. Creating a circle is pretty easy. You can just add the name. You can add the description. You can assign users to them. So if you wanted to do a specific company and then you wanted to add that user immediately in here you can you can also add custom field categories here as well and then you can change the color you can also add all the new p clients in here the new prospects in here you can this is subjective to each circle so maybe you have like a circle that's dedicated to all of your audience needs right you can you can do that as well the great thing is too that this does automatically sync to an audience. So let's say that you created a circle for onboarding and essentially then when syncing and creating this audience, it will then create a audience inside the marketing module, which you can send emails to that circle as well. Circles are used throughout the system. It's used for marketing. It's used for projects. Well, not projects, projects are individual. So scratch that, but it's used for um, anything resource related, like for example, the dashboards, the portal pages, you can also use it for the LMS as well, which is pretty cool. And now we're going to jump over to these hidden items here. So the inactive contacts and companies are basically just saying that you've deactivated their accounts. Once you have, they get into this little bucket in space. To, I kind of like call it a holding space because it just allows you to re-enable it at any point. Let's say that someone paused their subscription and you want to remove their entire access to the system. You can do that. Even if someone paused though, and I'm thinking now workflow-wise, you can always keep their access open but change their circle so that they have different access. So that's pretty much how that plays in a part. You can always reactivate it at any time. So you can activate it as a contact and then you can go ahead and delete them if you wanted to. The difference between a company's reactivation though is that with a company's reactivation, you have to first add them to a primary contact or create a new contact. So when you deactivate a company or make it inactive, you then have to link them back to a person. And so that's the biggest thing there. But then you can also just delete them from here as well. Importing companies and contacts are also separate, but if you were to import a company, I would say, again, import the companies first because they always get linked to a person and essentially that would do its own kind of matching and get to that person to be the primary contact. And essentially that is the beauty of this import because then you have the sample, which I use. I don't try to use anything of my own because it does help you to line up all the fields. When importing, it will show you a similar page like how you saw when we did the ad contact or ad company because it's going to make sure that you click the drop down and align each row that's relevant to you to that actual person, okay? And then you have the same thing with importing contacts. You have the ability to do that as well with you being able to upload your CSV and then linking each field to that person as well. And then you have a log. So anytime you do make an import, you have a log that shows you the errors <clears throat> or maybe it shows you, you know, the status. So that's exactly what ends up here. And then the settings are similar or exactly the menu item that's here in, in settings. You can create different circles for each company. And let's say that this was toggled off, but then you want to create a, a company circle for existing companies. You can do that by clicking this button. There is a company match option that essentially when someone fills out a form and maybe they miss an I or an E or just a letter in general, it will try to match them first. And if not, then it'll just create a new one. That can be prevented if you just make this like 90%. So make sure that everything <laughs> that they do, you know, is very specific. And you can see an example here. So for example, 
you have the ability where they you, they you already have like the uh, um, apple dot ink or apple ink and then they have a period there but they just submitted the apple um ink without the period so it essentially will match that person because of the fact that it's 75 percent, you know or whatever accuracy you have here so it just creates that that ease so that you don't have that um that issue and then the sales person visibility here, if when they're claimed, you have the exclusive or the shared, and it does give you an example of what these are. It basically just tells you what the difference is with shared. It represents more than one company. You can have, you know, different salespersons on that. And then exclusive means that it's pretty much, excuse me, exclusive to that salesperson and no one else can see it. You have different default fields that you can create. So you have the, or default fields that already exist. So you have default visibility fields here. You have some custom field targets that you can create. You can also manage that inside of the flyout menu as well. You have some custom fields for the contact, the company, and the private. And then going down to the default um, forms embedding options. So this is where I always love to do the first like wave of things that I do when setting up accounts because sometimes it's so um <laughs> I don't want to say annoying but it can be a little tedious to have to go into each form and then like go in and say okay I want to hide the form title I want to hide the required message I want to make sure these are uh, transparent so I do that at the beginning and anytime that I then create a form this is the default settings that automatically get um, created. Now, of course, you can customize it if needed, but this just saves a ton of time. And then you can also set the permissions for the roles of individuals who can export CSVs. And then the SMS phone formatting is pretty new, but because they were having trouble with Twilio not getting the SMS form format correct, that they enabled this tool that allows you to just format the field that you have, that you can modify it and validate it. And you can select the field wherever they have it selected, and then you can allow that field to be formatted correctly in bulk. And then if you wanted to copy a custom field to that SMS enabled field, it just allows you to choose the source, and then you would just target it to whichever field you're using. And then you would either say it by the target name or bulk copy it and override existing. <sighs> that was a lot, but you're getting through this video pretty well. Now you have deals. Deals is what you would actually imagine. It is literally a pipeline. It just gives you the ability to track and forecast all of your um, incoming valued closing of stages and things like that. So maybe you have a deal that you want to create for a specific contact. You can add the title of the deal, the details, the category. You can expect the closing. You can add the closing close date. You can add the value and then you can select a pipeline, which you can create on the other window. And then you can actually make it visible to an individual or all staff and making it visual, making it for all staff is, you know, custom to you as well. And then you can send some uh, emails with each deal that's created. Now the pipelines, you can create endless amount of them, which is pretty recent. So with a pipeline, you could essentially have the currency. So maybe you're one of your pipelines is in American, but then the other one is in like pounds or whatnot. So you can create that separately or any currency that you add. And inside of a deal itself, or a pipeline itself, you're able to see the stages. If you go ahead and manage the stages, you can also just simply customize each of the sections, add the um, probability, as well as delete them, and add some different stages as well. I also like that you can just simply add a deal directly to the pipeline and then choose a stage that they're in, do the followers and all the things from here. And then if you wanted to forecast, you can see it based on the month and forward. So it goes up, as you can see, four months, but you can always just choose these little um, arrows that allow you to see the forecast for as, as long as you want to. I think that's pretty cool. And then you have the CRM events. So the events are very similar to what most people think would be like a, an appointment, but it's not an appointment. It is an event that holds a, a relevance or a date on your calendar, and it's used as a reminder. So with events, you have the ability to link it to a contact. You can actually 
just create an event title. You can make it either public or private or shared with specific people. And then you can actually have the duration, the category, you can have automations, you can have reminders, all the things. And when a person signs up, maybe, and I haven't used this event feature a lot, but I'm I'm thinking that if you created uh, like a webinar and you wanted to add people to a specific date, you can. And that's where a generator comes into play. So you can actually do it based on generation of the date or based on a custom field or whatnot. So it's all set up with an automation. And when you do that, it will essentially trigger different automations that you have already tied to it. And I think that's where we are with this. I've discussed what CRM in, in the totality is, the segregation of the two company and contacts, the circles, the events, the deals, and all the settings. Again, feel free to reach out in the different ways to get more information. I love building out Sweet Dash accounts, but I really, really just love Sweet Dash in general. Um, and so if you wanted to reach out to me via email, you can do that via Sweet Dash at royalassistance.com. Come straight to the website at royalassistance.com slash Sweet Dash, or just drop a comment and just have questions that I can answer. I try to be very proactive with answering them, but I do find that it is great to just make sure that you guys have customization. The next step we're going to do is go over the office section. So I'm looking forward to this because this is going to be a wide range video. It might be a little bit longer, but you will get some value out of it. So thank you for joining and I hope to see you in the next video.